Uh, well, first of all, uh, lots of thanks to me. Right? So I'd like to thank the funding of the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> right? so, uh, the Center for Globalization and Cultural Studies, directed by Diana. Right? Uh, the project. And uh, uh, Valkyrie for the National Project, after all, I am here because Alagoas is connected to the National Project. And uh, to José de Rocha Tavares, which is my supervisor, right, in, in my PhD. She is the leader of the New Literacies Project in Alagoas. She had the initiative to bring it there, so she is the, the name, right? Um, she is also the leader of the research group Observatório da Linguagem in Uso, uh, in which I am. And as I said, my supervisor, and uh, I thank her because if she had uh, not uh, recommended me, I would not be here as well. So lots of thanks to me. <laughs> uh, and all that, uh, uh, I mean that. Uh, so this is my presentation, as Diana has said, New Literacy is an English Teacher Education in the State of Alagoas, a study case. Well, uh, I don't think I have to say that I am nervous because everybody has said that, right? So just keep that in mind, please. And um, also, Diana has stressed the fact that uh, both uh, Lena and I are here uh, at the very beginning of our research. So sometimes I have the feeling that I don't have a lot to contribute. So, but I have a lot of questions to make and. Uh, uh, I understand you are going to have lots of questions, so I hope you you contribute with my research. I think I am uh, here more to get than to give, in a way. So, and I hope in the future I can contribute more, of course. Um, well, uh, before I I start to consider some things, uh, when I go back to the last two days in at Glendon. I heard so many things that I have tried to include here some way or another. I was afraid that would make things confused because I had everything planned in advance. But then I started to think that other things would be even more relevant. So if there is anything I say that may look uh, strangely confusing, it's because they are really, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, to me as well. And I hope you'll help me clarify those points. So, some points to consider in my research. First of all, uh, I always depart from the Brazilian constitution uh, that uh, rules that Brazilian education should be prepare Brazilians for both work and citizenship. This is at the very beginning of the part that talks about education. And that is quoted in LDB, right, which is the national law for education. Uh, I think this uh, phrasing is annoying, really annoying to me, because um, if the, the educational system should prepare Brazilians for work and citizenship, the fact that the, the law uses and, this conjunction, uh, technically puts both work and citizenship at the same level, but self-excluding, right? Uh, this and that, they have the same value. And I cannot come to see how work is outside citizenship. For me, it doesn't make any sense. So this is one of the principles that guide my, my reflections. Then, the pedagogical project of the English under, uh, undergraduate course at UFAL demands that when students finish the course, so they are pre-service, they are going to, to be teachers after all, they should be able to work with their students, taking into account the needs of contemporary society. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain this in a while. Uh, I also consider the Osain, right, by Mario and Valkyria, uh, in the fact that they say the new literacies have become relevant in contemporary society. So that connects back to uh, the needs of contemporary society that I, uh, I said before. And the challenge to prepare youth to participate in a complex society, such as a contemporary one. Now we are coming to youth. 
Then, uh, Limari and uh, Valkyrie argue in favor uh, of uh, language, languages teaching as a space in which it is important to introduce theories about language and ICTs. So I'm coming slowly to my point, which is uh, the use of new technologies in, in education, right? In English teaching and other words. They also state that the use of ICT materializes language in new ways, demanding an urgent review of language, culture, and knowledge concepts in place so far. And then I, I am starting to get near this uh, VR Cake project, which is about knowledge production, right? Uh, then, in my research, uh, when I was preparing my, my project <coughs> to submit for, uh, to be a candidate at the, the graduate program, uh, I related uh, or seen two other documents that I had been searching. One is the Digital Literacy in Education, which is a document by UNESCO's Institute for Education Technologies, which is in Russia, right in Moscow, I think. And uh, it concludes that in order to develop adequate 21st century skills among students, educators should be authentic ICT users and integrate digital literacy with the other core competences in their professional and private lives. So, I somehow I had the feeling that in order to talk about how to teach uh, I'm talking about my practice as a professor, right, at UFAL. Uh, in order to, to teach my students how to use technology, I wouldn't necessarily be good at technology usage. So, maybe it would, uh, it would be something for a more theoretical perspective. Uh, I have had some practices uh, at other universities, uh, at one other university, in which uh, I worked with a concept of citizen journalism, and uh, my, uh, I led my students to create projects, and they were much better than me at technology. So they had to film, edit, and publish material on, uh, based on the citizenship journalism uh, concept. And they did it well, right? They went online and put it on YouTube. Uh, so this is something I am considering as well. Then, I, I reached uh, the MECY, which is the Manitoba Education Citizenship and Youth. It was the beginning of 2011 when I did it, and which talks about literacy with ICT across the curriculum. So we are considering, uh, I mean we, I, myself, right, and I, I am considering the use of technology in English language teaching. But here, the, it's the use across all the curriculum, not only language but geography, history, whatever. Then, uh, and it's interesting that uh, it's from 2006, about the same time as uh, was saying, right? Then, in my research, I reached the Northern Territory Government, uh, which is Australia, and in 2009, they were rethinking these concepts, and they, they make reference to this document from, uh, from Manitoba, right? So what I noticed is that there is a, a sort of global movement, right? In which one document refers to the others and everybody <coughs> talking about basically the same thing, which is the use of technology in education. Uh, then, uh, I come to the teaching of English as an additional second or foreign language, right? So the teaching of English has to consider that the approach to language use has become more complex due, due to multimodality, which has brought about the agency of interlocutors. Again, this is a thing, right? No, no, this is not. This is a, a preface that uh, you published. Uh, I don't remember the name of the book. I have it here. Clarice's book? I think it's Clarice's book, right? I think. No idea. <laughs> one, of, one of them, one of them. This is the problem when you write too much, you don't know what <laughs> So, it's a preface to Clarissa's book, I think. And then, uh, I also consider that there is a revolution in as far as visual language plays a more and more important role in communication, which is based on CRES and LANC, 
uh, which is a thought I again got from uh, uh, something you wrote. So it's uh, based on the readings I have made of your readings of what they did. Um, so far, I have put many things together, and uh, in order to interconnect the local and the global, which again brings us to the project, uh, I would like just to go back and uh, uh, point out these uh, three elements. The Brazilian Constitution demands, remember, that the education prepares students <coughs> for work and citizenship. This is an important point. Uh, Osing uh, argued that new literacy concepts should be taken into account in the work with all school subjects and therefore with the English language in elementary and high school and that UNESCO documents digital literacy in education because I, I got this one to be a more global one, right? So I have the global and the local interconnected here. Well, uh, and this brings me to Alagoas, right, in, in Brazil. So we have at one point UNESCO be the most global one, if I can, may say that, and then the problems we have in uh, Alagoas, which in a way ref uh, were referred to in the pedagogical project of the course that I work right at UFAO. Uh, and and uh, the work with students should then bear in mind the development of a citizenship in both the local and global levels on the basis of a critical perception. Uh, again, bring global and local again, right? So, uh, my intention with my research is to try to promote the engagement of language in social practices in which both students and teachers are agents, coming that from Penny Cook. And uh, I want my research to, to focus teacher education from the perspective of the social responsibility that they take on when they go into the classroom, considering the new demands of their work in contemporaneity. This is a, uh, something I got from Limario also in a pre preface to another book. Mm -hmm. uh, it was last year uh, that it was published. Now. Uh, I have some questions there that uh, I hope will guide my, my, my research. And there used to be one up until yesterday, I think, when I was talking to Andrea, right, about my project, and she found the problem there. <laughs> <laughs> In the it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to tell her, to, her what, what I was uh, doing, what I meant to do, and then she said, "But Daniel, you were saying this, but there is there may be a problem here." So I rephrased it. It was a matter of uh, how I phrased, right? So I rephrased it uh, very recently. Uh, thank you, Jose, for your comment. So, number one. How can we work with the multimodality and multiliteracy under the concepts of the new literacies without the necessary infrastructure? Um, I, I think it would be common sense to say that if you are working with the uh, new literacies, with modality issues and things, you need equipment to, to, to do that, computers, the internet, uh, to, to be able to mix the visual element uh, with the sound, this is what multimodality is all about, isn't it, after all? And uh, I don't know if it's ideological to say that, but it certainly is, but uh, everybody uses these nowadays, right? If, you're, if you don't have access to this technology, your uh, citizenship can be impaired because you cannot buy a ticket for a bus if you don't know how to deal with these things. So you cannot go around, you cannot do many things. And uh, I have this question because, again, uh, I remember once, I think it was in Salvador that Limoelio said something about the fact that uh, critical literacy um, cannot be thought of in terms as you can only work with the principles of critical literacies and new literacies if uh, you have computers and advanced technology, you can work based on that principle. Also, uh, if you have books only, for example, if you don't have computers, it, does that mean that you cannot work 
under the, the principles of critical literacies? I guess not. So uh, uh, that's what I, uh, I'm trying to do. Then number two, how can we contribute to a work in the English language classrooms in Alagoas that can enable the rethinking of the classical skills, classifications, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, considering the reorganization to which they are subject in the context of multimodality, right? So you have listening with the image as well. When you have a film, you have uh, uh, things can be mixture, right? So, th these are my questions, and uh, to work on them, uh, theoretically speaking, besides some things I have already mentioned, such as Penny Cook and, and others, uh, I, I work with the, the concept of language as social practice, so, uh, based on Bakhtin and Voloshina, um, the new learning, because uh, I am trying to think of a uh, classroom as the spaces to learn, as something that go beyond a four wall classroom, so you can learn and study and produce knowledge uh, anywhere. Uh, restructuring of schools from knowledge distribution centers to knowledge construction centers. So uh, this is a reading I have of uh, Foucault. Uh, because places where uh, <coughs> knowledge is produced are places where power is produced. So, uh, depending on how you deal with knowledge from the perspective of distribution or construction creation, you have different uh, sharing of power. Authorship, one of the names is Foucault, and uh, symbolic capital by Bourdieu, and the fostering of agency. I'd like to call attention to this matter of authorship, and I think it's very much connected to the, the idea of the, this project, knowledge production, right? Because I think that's the core thing in my project. Uh, in order to, to talk about knowledge production, you have to talk about authorship. You have to uh, be an agent in the production of knowledge. So if we work under the concept of a school that distributes knowledge and does not allow for knowledge creation, uh, you have problems in different instances, citizenship and uh, power relations and, uh, and all that. So one of the ideas uh, uh, I'm having at the moment is that uh, so, going back to the beginning when I said that we don't have the infrastructure in schools and that I think it should not be the reason for us to just uh, freeze and use that as an excuse not to do anything. Considering that, uh, it's funny, uh, at FAO we don't have really lots of technology available. But I see my students have, uh, some of them, not all, iPhones. They have, I have seen students with tablets. So the, uh, some students uh, can have the access to this new technology. Not all of them, certainly not, but some, some of them. And I think that this may be uh, a way to foster a cooperative work among students, because uh, if I have a, a tablet, an iPhone, a computer, but you don't, we can work together because you have ideas, right? And uh, doing that, uh, produce knowledge that's locally relevant. And then the citizen journalism concept may be a, uh, a possibility because then you, you lead students into thinking about their reality and uh, uh, criticizing it in order to talk about it and show it to other people. Well, so that's basically what I'd like to say. And now, if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you.